While Fate's Divided story arcs tend to heat up not long after the brand new 200 start date, to get the clearest picture we need to take a trip back in time. You join us in the year 190. In China's far west, Liu Yan has waited patiently his entire life for an opportunity to seize power. The chaos at Liu Yang has allowed Liu Yan to slip into power, taking control of Yi province. His thoughts turn to building an enduring dynasty. One problem, Liu Yan's old age approaches. He is relentlessly driven to achieve a lasting legacy and will pay any price to achieve that. In the potentially decade-spanning conflicts of Three Kingdoms, it is not enough to be a dominant ruler. We must prepare the kingdom for distant campaigns on the horizon. A storm approaches and the following years will see powerful faction heirs all clashing for their ultimate prize. Liu Yan's campaign challenges him to endure great hardship and make decisions which will make or break the potential of his heir's rule. With sacrifice, he can stockpile his unique resource, aspiration, to give his kingdom every possible chance of uniting China. There are various trade-offs he can make to give his successor a fighting chance in this cruel, cruel world. Not only are these trade-offs stackable, they scale over time, meaning greater rewards the more adversity he endures. For example, here Liu Yan has activated the market protectionism trade-off, cutting him off from the outside world in exchange for renewed strength from within. He won't be able to hoard aspiration endlessly without more trade-offs. The year in which you pass on the torch also considerably alters the benefits conferred to your heir. It really is not enough to simply accumulate aspiration. You will need to complete the objectives relevant to the bonuses you want to access in years to come. Here Liu Yan has to choose between holding on to power so he can finish off the Nan Man himself, or handing over the keys to the kingdom before his heir can become bitter and restless. Conquering the southern tribes not only stabilizes his power base, it also helps complete the Swelling Domain objective, which will grant his heir one of a number of new options in his arsenal. Through many vicious and brutal encounters with the tribes of the Nan Man, Liu Yan has legitimized his dynasty in the eyes of his soldiers. The Nan Man are ferocious, but Liu Yan has been able to consistently outnumber them thanks to the new progression mechanic for Han factions. The rework allows Han factions to specialize in different dimensions as they claw their way up the tree on the journey to Emperor. Adding this to Liu Yan's evolving campaign mechanics makes for a unique playstyle. If you like building your own personal dynasty, Liu Yan is your character. It's time for the next generation to take charge. Keeping Cao Cao friendly had been a priority for Liu Yan, but perhaps the time has come for a change of strategy. Cao Cao is not to be trusted under any circumstances. He stands as the major local threat to the domination of the West and beyond. To make matters worse, his eldest sons Liu Fan and Liu Dan have both been killed. His youngest son Liu Zhang is sharp, but he wasn't forged in the same fires as his father. Liu Zhang may not have been the first choice heir, and right now he doesn't seem like a serious threat to Cao Cao's foothold. The storm brewing between Yan Shao and Cao Cao in the north will require all his family's aspiration to navigate. Once childhood friends, their conflict is a pivotal moment in the era of the Three Kingdoms. In this campaign, Yuan Shao has too often been distracted to the threat of Cao Cao's underhanded opportunism, and now China is paying the price. Cao Cao keeps the emperor against his will and holds significantly more power than newly crowned leader Liu Zhang. But that doesn't mean we can't alter the fate of China. With Yuan Shao increasingly preoccupied by petty politics and the battle between his sons to succeed him, it falls to Liu Zhang to protect the people. Bullish Yuan Tan leads the effort against Cao Cao in an apparent attempt to win his father's approval. Liu Zhang's first act is to bend the knee to Liu Biao's pacifist empire. 
While this might seem like a move lacking in ambition, is actually rather shrewd. It grants control of the southern borders, allowing Liu Zhang to turn his resources to more important matters. Thankfully, Liu Zhang's father prepared admirably. By spending the aspiration resource on his soldiers, we can seize upon a moment of weakness. With Sun Tzu's Wu army pushing up in an attempt to liberate the emperor, the window of opportunity to critically wound the snake Cao Cao arises. Thanks to his greed, Cao Cao is already running at a food deficit. This massive movement range and morale bonus will last 15 turns, allowing Liu Zhang to move with the speed of red hair. We ride swiftly to capture Cao Cao's crucial fishing port in the Yellow River. With Cao Cao pulled across multiple fronts, it should be a battle we can win. In addition to the usual impacts this has in stunting his ability to replenish his armies, it also impacts the new Imperial Intrigue system introduced with Fates Divided. Imperial Intrigue reflects how the Emperor looks upon you, allowing us to manipulate the diplomatic relations of Han Empire factions. As well as maintaining high public order, keeping that food stockpile topped off now also impacts your ability to influence Han Empire factions. Ma Teng could once be considered a friend to the kingdom. Unfortunately for him, he's falling out of favour with the Empire, and occupies locations of significant strategic value. With a sly whisper, we can manipulate diplomatic relations and squeeze inconvenient factions into submission with minimal bloodshed. Fate has led Cao Cao's own successor to recapture the fishing ports of Mengmen. Capitalizing on Liu Yan's great sacrifice, it's time to shape the fate of China. As we weren't able to strike down Cao Cao yet, I also have to deal with the prowess provided by the Northern Army. If either Cao Cao or Yuan Shao reach the seventh character rank, the Northern Army comes into play. Soldiers sworn to protect and serve the North against all threats fill out the roster, significantly improving the options available to them. They are the bravest of the brave, keenest of the keen. We must be smart, penetrate the ranks and extinguish every last drop of morale. Our Dong Zubing defenders are experts in causing fear in the enemy ranks. Unfortunately, as usual, any army under Cao Cao's banner has several tricks up their sleeve. He has recruited battle-hardened Yellow Turban remnants and manipulated their devotion for his own needs, causing them to go berserk when most men would flee. His Tiger Cub units also hold the discipline trait, keeping them focused on the task at hand, even when their leaders fall. It's looking bleak but we have successfully lured Cao Cao's heir into our grasp. It's time to liberate the Emperor. How will you decide the Emperor's fate? Fates Divided is out on the 11th of March.